Ladies and gentlemen, the Shred Gaming Tedicom video. Let's discuss the extremely tricky situation of online video streaming. So, are you a VPN pirate? That's the question. Because there is a massive, huge amount of pressure on companies like Netflix right now. And Netflix are actually saying that they possibly will stop blocking VPNs. In fact, even the BBC has said that ISPs should assume heavy VPN users are pirates. In other words, they should monitor the connection, what, what people are doing with their connections. If they're putting a lot of traffic through VPNs, well, they should throttle that connection or communicate with the consumer to ensure that they are not using it for nefarious means. Now, you might or immediately, as soon as I say nefarious means, you might say to yourself, well, I don't, I don't use torrents. You know, I've got Netflix or whatever. But the problem is, this is where the disconnect begins. If you are a consumer, let's say in the United Kingdom, and you are using a VPN to access the US Netflix to these big corporations, for example, the MPAA, the Motion Picture Association of America, you are effectively committing piracy. This is an absolutely huge topic, and honestly, I don't think I'm going to get to the bottom of it um, in this video, but I do think that I'm at least going to inform you guys of what's going on, and I'm genuinely curious to hear your thoughts on this one. You're getting the MPAA, the Australian Home Entertainment Distribution Association, AHEDA, along with the BBC and various others, and they're all giving a lot of pressure to consumers you turn off the VPN, and then you can access the streaming video services. The problem is, of course, you can't in some cases. Because the content of the US Netflix, the Australian Netflix, the British Netflix, the Japanese Netflix, the Netflix on the planet, you know, Venus, is all different. Believe it or not, and I was actually shocked by this number, there are over... 200, I just want to say that again, 200,000 Australians who are subscribing to US VPN services solely for the purpose of streaming videos from Netflix and other sources. That's a lot of users. I mean, that's a hell of a lot of users. And companies know this. So what's starting to happen is that they want this stuff blocked because they know that local distributors content distributors, so the distributors in the United States, the distributors in United Kingdom, Australia, and so on, they don't want you to do this because they know that if you're pay if they are paying for a show, let's just use, a, let's just use an easy figure of, say, a million dollars an episode, um, and say, let's just, for example, say there's 20 episodes in a season, they've just coughed up 20 million, right, for season three of whatever show. They need to recuperate those losses, and the only way they can do that effectively is by having high ratings and having people watch the show. Whereas, on the other hand, they feel that if you know an Australian is watching the show, let's just say, for example, he's watching I don't know, Game of Thrones or whatever via a streaming service, they believe that they're not going to watch Game of Thrones natively on their distribution network. They're just going to watch it online. And I would argue, and I'm sure many of you would agree, the traditional media now is dying. And no, I'm not really referring to, let's say, the print magazines and stuff like that, which I do agree are having issues, like newspapers and so on. We know their circulation is getting lower and lower. Personally, I prefer print media in some aspects, like comics, just for example. I'm a massive Batman and Superman and X-Men. I'm a bit of a nerd in that respect. I personally... I've tried e-comics, I have, but I just don't like them. I just like, you know, smelling the pages, I like looking at the artwork, you know, dissecting every little bit of the image, really looking at it, visualizing, chilling in bed. Yeah, I could do it on a Kindle or whatever, but it just isn't as fun. To me, I prefer the tactile feel. For TV, not so much. I have a free... Uh, streaming services in the United Kingdom. I have Netflix, I have Amazon Prime, and I also have Now TV. And with Now TV, I have the films and I have the uh, TV as well. And I've got to tell you, I, I wouldn't like to go back to traditional television. The whole purpose isn't so much even the advertising on traditional television. 
the major reason is because I can just watch when what I want, when I want, as much as I want, how I want. So if I decide at 1am, you know what? It's a Friday night, I've got nothing to do. I feel like watching an episode of The Blacklist. I can do that. On the other hand, if I feel like ah, I'm halfway through, you know what? This is a bit too serious, I'm getting a bit too tired. I can't really concentrate and focus on this enough. I'm just going to put on whatever. And you can do that. You've got the extra level of control. Now, of course, you can record stuff on TV, but it's just not as flexible. But there's an increasing level of pressure for users who are outside of the United States. And just to be clear here, we're also referring to Americans who may well be, let's say, um, traveling abroad. They may be, say, working in the United Kingdom for, say, six months. I have a friend, actually, who's in the United... who's actually from America. He's from Austin, Texas. He's actually over here. He's been over here for, like, I don't know, six years-ish, something like that, maybe a little bit longer. Anyway, when he first came over here, um, he barely knew anyone, and so I was like, yeah, okay, I'll bring over my console. So I took over my games console and stuff, and we're just kind of chilling out. And... He said, you know what, I just, I can't get over how the lack of shows over here, um, you know, and he showed me on his uh, laptop, uh, like a spreadsheet he had, I kid you not, it was like a spreadsheet of all the shows, all the seasons he's up to, the episodes, and, all, and I was like, damn, and he was like, yeah, I, c I can't really get them over here, they're just, they're all on different channels and so on, it's just, it's just a mess. Um, and there's some which are like a season behind, or some which they've, they're not airing them properly, or in a different order, or whatever. And he says it's just it's just an absolute nightmare for me. Um, so he loves like streaming services like Netflix simply because it just makes it so much easier. And you could remember that Netflix isn't concurrent. And I just use Netflix as an example. So in other words, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. Let's just for example take. Um, the blacklist. It's been on Now TV in the United Kingdom for a long time. It's been done, aired, finished, you know, season one in America for quite the longest time. Now it's just popped recently on Netflix. So we all know that, well, most likely you know that Hulu are already under the pressure. They're, they've got the thumb screws on them and they've already said... Well, based on your IP address, we noticed you're trying to access Hulu through an anonymous proxy tool, even though it's not currently available outside the US, blah, blah, blah. Now, don't forget, if you're an American and you're trying to use a VPN for whatever reason, this also affects you as well. The AHDEACO, Simon Bush, has already discussed this. He believes in a recent interview that Netflix will negotiate a potential ban on VPNs as well. I know the discussion is already being had by the distributors in the United States with Netflix about Australians with VPNs, he began. So access to content they're not licensed to access in Australia, they're requesting it be blocked now, not just when it comes to Australia. In other words, if you see a show, even if it's not due to air in Australia for 15 years, you're still not going to be able to access it. It's just going to block the whole thing, and it will be shown when your local cable station or your local Netflix or your local streaming services will decide and deign to show it, which is basically when they can get the rights to show it. It becomes a little bit trickier, however. What internet connection speed do you have? It's a rhetorical question, don't worry. I can guarantee you it's pretty quick, however, compared to, let's say, 10 years ago. But why do you need a fast internet connection? To stream video. Or to, in my case, one of the real reasons I use it, honestly, is for work. Either for gaming tech, or because I'm trying to do web server maintenance, or whatever it is, I need a fast internet connection. However, the primary purpose for a lot of people is that they can use streaming in different rooms. So, you know... Room A is streaming Netflix for, you know, a kid. Room B is streaming it for the parents. Room C is, you know, streaming it for the wolf outside or whatever. It's irrelevant. You get the general gist because, let's face it, 1080p streams now are extremely expensive in terms of bandwidth. But even YouTube, uh, despite the fact that it does have some compression, which is one of the reasons, of course, we usually have lossless videos available to download on our websites for like graphics comparisons. 
it still can be quite hungry and you'll notice this if your internet connection um, is acting a bit squiffy you sometimes have to drop it down to like 480p just to be able to maintain it so even though that we are in the United Kingdom I'm on a 120 MB connection I'm tapping my fingers waiting for it to be upgraded to 150 there's an increasing level of pressure which suggests that if consumers are using VPNs that VPN connection will be using a lot of bandwidth. As I've mentioned, the BBC um, have said that ISPs should assume heavy VPN users are pirates, which coincides extremely well since, well, you can guess it. It means that if you are a VPN user, the, mo the main reason most likely you're VPNing, aside from piracy, and the mo more likely and legal, legal-ish reason, would be, quite simply put, so that you can access American Netflix and so on. So it becomes a really tricky situation, because there's multiple workarounds already um, that are available, and it, it, it's, it's getting a bit messy, to be honest, because it becomes a game of chess, there's still always going to be workarounds that are, well, around. There's nothing stopping you from setting up a Linux virtual server, for example, in a United States-based cloud provider. They're cheap. Yes, they'll require technical know-how, but you know what? They're still going to work. And how often can they, really, can they really block everything? And it's just going to create more bad will for the consumer. Now, on the other hand... A logical argument would be if you are accessing, let's say that you are a member of the British Netflix. Just for example, you're coughing up your fee, five ninety nine, whatever it is a month, and you're able to access the content on the British Netflix. Now, you could use a VPN to access the American Netflix. And you might say logically that you're five ninety nine. You know, you're paying for that. The problem is that. The counter argument would be that no, your five ninety nine is not paying for the American content, for the American license content. Your five ninety nine is paying for the British content. On the other hand, you could also argue it's the same company, so what do you care? You could also argue, well, I don't give a shit about the British content. It sucks. All that I give a crap about is the American content. And it becomes even trickier when you're dealing with, let's say, Hulu or other ones where you can actually use an American credit card and go through a ridiculous, torturous process to access it. And that actually pissed off a hell of a lot of consumers because of this. I remember there were actually a ridiculous amount of threads on the internet when if when they first blocked it because people actually paid, or prepaid using credit cards and so on. They, you know, set up the service and they were happy. They were streaming whatever they were streaming. And then it was all blocked, and they argued, well, what the hell, man? I'm paying you money. I'm giving you money monthly. I'm physically giving you the cash, and now you're slapping me in the face, and you're telling me that I'm pirating from you when all I'm doing is watching it from a different country. Oh, dear. I, I, I don't really know how the situation is going to resolve itself anytime soon. The problem is, as consumers, we are fighting... A war which is just ridiculous because you're getting everyone. I mean, I, I've got to say the BBC's comments, you know, sometimes they do produce some ludicrous comments. But this one just pissed me the hell off because it's making an assumption um, as to your intent, which is just frankly and utterly ridiculous. But as consumers, there's going to always be something or someone there's going to be something or someone that's just going to create an extension for a browser, or they're going to create a new VPN service, or they're going to create, you know, rotating IP addresses, or they're going to just, you know, you're going to get like five or six dudes that um, just say to themselves, hey, you know what, you know, Simon at work, he's got um, the knowledge of Linux, who wants to chip in like a couple of bucks a month, and we'll just 
all by a VPN in the United States, you know, we'll just make sure it's a really good one, it'll cost us like 20 bucks and it could service all of us or whatever. There's going to be always be a way around this and then you've got the dicey situation of that increasing real legitimate piracy. Uh, gamers will know the same pain. This is a massive problem with gaming, uh, particularly even on PC. Like, I remember when Steam first came out, and like an idiot, I thought to myself, oh, awesome, that means it's going to be available in the United Kingdom and Australia and all of these English-speaking countries. I know that's a bit harsh to say, for example, if you live in Germany or a country which, say, Japan, which might require some localization in terms of you know language, but I thought, well, you know, most likely they're probably going to have already done that anyways. It's going to be beta testing, so it's going to come out faster. And yet, even still, some games... They are released in the United States like a couple of days early. Or in some rarer cases in the United Kingdom earlier or Australia earlier or whatever. And these aren't even to do with time zones in some cases. And it's frankly annoying. <laughs> I actually, true story, on a couple of games for RGT, I actually used a American server. And I basically logged into my Steam account on an American server, went through an entire grueling ass process to get access to it. I believe Bioshock Infinite was one of them. I'm not 100%, but I think it was one of them. And I went through this whole grueling procedure just to be able to activate the game a little bit earlier on Steam so I could download it and so on. Because I bloody paid for the thing. It's not piracy. I paid. Did you want to see my bloody, you know, direct debit where it came out of my account? And that's the problem. That's the disconnect that we're starting to get as consumers now. And it becomes a bit trickier, however, when you're dealing with this whole streaming situation. Anyway, I feel that I'm ranting a little bit now and probably rambling. Because, quite frankly speaking, it's just a very frustrating situation that, once again, we as consumers are the ones that are being accused and basically on the defensive. And that just pisses me off. The onus should not be on us to always defend ourselves as consumers. Um, and yet, it is so. And to really, really, really piss me off even further... This isn't a discussion. This is not a debate. This is something that they've already decided. This isn't a situation where they're, you know, happily talking about it and discussing it amicably and saying, well, look, here's the problem. So we're going to do this for now, but come up with some solutions or something. It's just black and white to them. And that really upsets the hell out of me. As much as I don't like Nintendo, for example, for its fairly blanket YouTube policy, Sometimes they will listen, and, you know, that can be good. They, I don't know, it's it's just a very frustrating situation to be totally and utterly honest with you. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go, because frankly, I'm not really getting any further with this one. It's just pissed me off too much, to be honest, so let me know what you think. I'll see you soon, take care, and bye for now.